Hello everyone, this is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries and today I would like to share a nice little model that I made just for the fun of it. Uh, a little bit of a challenge in terms of geometry that goes in and out of itself or intersects in some interesting way and as you see I have two solid bodies here that follow some really nice mathematical formula, formulae and uh, they're really good looking to me anyway. Um, I love art like this. And so now <clears throat> I'd like to tell you a few things about how it was built and hopefully you will gain some knowledge that can be used in all sorts of ways. And um, the things, the uh, elements that I've used, I've also used in uh, straight ahead aerospace uh, applications, food applications, um, many different kinds of companies uh, need the techniques that I've used. And so, without further ado, let's go and turn the model back in time with a control shift home. And it goes all the way back to the first little entities. So, the very first thing I did with this model is I created variables. There was a variable called amplitude which was 0.2, the height was 6, 6 inches, n equals 7, that's the number of lobes, t equals 1, and then I have this thing called advance, which is 360 degrees divided by 2 times n. It basically takes those two models and shifts them so that the lobes will um, be staggered or alternated. And then there's equations that I use to create these law curves. So I started creating geometry. And let's see what I can show you. I'm going to say Control Shift K. Let's open everything up. Okay. And the very first thing was a law curve. Let me make current feature. There's the first log curve, which is the basis for one of the models, and then there's another one, current feature. And as you can see, it's staggered. It's staggered by the uh, variable called advance, which is 360 degrees uh, divided by 2n. And these uh, these express these uh, curves are created with this little uh, function advance amplitude there's a diameter d which is starts off at four so that's the mean distance of the diameter of the circles or these you know uh, these shapes with these lobes on them there's n that's the number of uh, lobes if you will and uh, somewhere there's other equations uh, that control there they are r is the radius so the radius is d divided by 2, that's the diameter divided by 2, plus the amplitude times sine of t times n times 360. So that means uh, the n, since the n is 7, the uh, sine function will go up and down 7 times, multiplied by the amplitude, added on to d over 2. So that's why the radius of this thing changes and, and it gets all the lobes. And then you have a formula for x and that's r times sine times uh, t times 360, or sine of t times 360. So that's the radius going in and out. And then the radius in the z uh, direction is cosine. Uh, so when you put a sine and a cosine together, you get a circle, unless, of course, you're multiplying it by a radius that is constantly moving up and down. And then you have uh, two different equations. They're both based on t. Incidentally, when I create uh, law curves in general, I use t as unitless. So when I multiply it by something, it doesn't become an area rather than a length. So that's a little trick that you might have to use. And so there's really a lot here. And then I created these two uh, extrusion, uh, uh, these two curves. Um, the very next thing was. Let's see, my current feature, um, a little sketch that um, goes to the start point, my current feature, a point there, my current feature, 
and then we have a uh, extrude a sheet body and then there's a bunch of stuff that I make in order to place on that sheet body a extrude my current feature and that is a nice little window that I that I cut out of the uh, sheet body uh, the window follows um, a nice sketch that looks like this it's um, basically a uh, square with these nice uh, uh, blends on them or arcs and they're all blended so it's a nice little shape to take out of that uh, that sheet body okay and then we have we're having a little bit of a problem here what is going on where did ah there it goes okay so we finish that okay cancel and I lost my there we go uh, let's see then I patterned it make current feature you pattern the little cuts when I patterned it I patterned it along a curve and I used this curve to pattern along otherwise it would not follow that face so well current feature. Then I did some composite curves to uh, when I create the other sheet body the um, next cut has to be staggered. It needs to be higher than this and it needs to follow a nice uh, a nice curve. So um, at some point let's see what happens now I made another uh, extruded sheet body and I patterned uh, the pattern and so I had two patterns. So there you go. Uh, once I had those two patterns, you can see that they interlock very nicely. And then I twisted them both with a global shaping. So there's that. So now they're inter interlocking and twisting. Then I trimmed them. I trimmed them, trimmed them, and I thickened them. And so when I did all of that, it looked really nice. And I thought it would look even nicer if I uh, blended all these sharp edges. Well, that was kind of tedious. Um, there was no way to put that blend in the uh, pattern because the pattern happened on a sheet body level and necessarily so. So I literally had to go in and select all these edges, but it was a labor of love. And so the finished product looked very striking. And of course, it took a little while to make all those blends. Of course, I think um, the amount of blending here and the complexity would bring some modelers to their knees. But I've always found that NX is uh, superb at that. And then a Control W. And you get rid of all the artifacts. There we go. And then there's a little known trick um, to make it spin quite nicely. And if you go to uh, menu, view, operation, rotate, rotate, and you do a view up vector, and you say your view up vector is going to be, in this case, the y axis, you say OK. And then you go to, uh oh, <laughs> let's do that. Uh, then you say uh, continuous rotate and you just give it a little push just like that so there you have it I believe that when you apply these wonderful techniques to art and geometry that is difficult you will increase your skills precipitously and I believe that um, the creativity that's involved in doing this kind of work is um, a very, very nice thing and very important in order to like kind of constantly increase your skills. I think it's really nice to try to constantly improve what you do. And it's interesting, it's always been interesting to me that um, when some people talk about mechanical engineering, they don't always think about creativity. And in my view, that's just quite the opposite that we, in many cases, mechanical engineers have to do 
things that were never thought of before and much of it is incredibly creative so it's uh, quite the privilege again my name is steve samuel from design visionaries please subscribe and like uh communicate with me um sometimes i am able to comment on your comments uh as you could imagine time is kind of tight but it is a fun labor of love and um thank you very much for um it's quite a nice bit of feedback that i've been getting from you as the user community and i really appreciate it thanks again